there's a lot of anxiety over shocks. Uh, people are worried about shocks. So first of all, I'll say there are inappropriate shocks. We talked about that. It's a really low percentage that you'll get one. And oftentimes the inappropriate shocks happen because of outside influences. So it's because people oh. are using that power drill really close yep. and your device gets confused. That's one reason why inappropriate shocks happen. So you can mitigate that risk by following the recommendations that the medical device companies have, keeping distance between your device and whatever you're using. That's one of the things mm -hmm. you can do to reduce that risk. But they do happen. Um, what I tell people about appropriate shocks is you want that to happen. That's the good thing. That's why you have the device. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about cardiac arrest. Survival rates of cardiac arrest are not good. It's about seven percent, and that is with CPR. That's with calling nine one one. It's about seven percent. It gets better with CPR and AED use. Your chance of survival rises, and especially if they start it immediately, the sooner they start CPR, the sooner they get a defibrillator there. Your chances go up. But overall, with everybody who has a sudden cardiac arrest, your chance of survival is seven percent. With a defibrillator. Your chance of survival is about 98%. It's really, really good. Yeah, and so when I talk better. to people who are debating, should I get an ICD? My doctor's telling uh, me I should have an ICD. Should I do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, if your doctor's telling you to wear your seatbelt, are you wearing your seatbelt? You are because you have a higher chance of surviving a crash with sure. a seatbelt. You have a higher chance of surviving, much higher chance of surviving a cardiac arrest. So these are the good shocks. So there are a lot of people who are really anxious about shocks just in general. But really the shocks that you should be anxious about if you're gonna be anxious at all are the inappropriate ones. And they're very rare. They happen, but they're really small. It's a really small percentage. The other ones you want to happen because yeah. that's the good thing that keeps, that's what keeps you alive. Um, so that's important to understand. Um, how many people lose consciousness? Uh, most, I, we, I don't know the numbers exactly, but most because they oh, are really? having a fatal rhythm. Their heart is not pumping. And the devices aren't fast enough to deliver a shock. In, in so wait, minute. they don't yeah. lose consciousness because of the shock, but because their heart is doing something not correct. Is that most true? people lose consciousness well before the shock hits? Seconds before ah, the shock hits. Okay, I guess um, some people or many people think they lose consciousness because of the shock. Not usually, no. That's what I thought no. actually too. No. There are, there are instances where your heart will be going crazy. You are feeling super lightheaded. You're yep, on yep. the verge of, of passing out and you'll get shocked. And that's good too. That's the device doing its job. So those are people who are awake during their shocks. And there are people who are awake during shocks. And yep. the reaction that I've heard is very different. I've never received a shock, so I can't tell you from personal experience. What I have heard from other people is everything that ranges from, I've, I've heard one person describe it as the most painful thing they've ever experienced. Yeah. Others say it's sudden, it's a yeah. surprise, yeah. but it's over in an instant. It's so like I had a shock, shock from... and I would, I had a shock. I would lean to what you just said that it's very, uh, yeah, you, you don't expect it, but it's very yeah, quickly it. over. It's over in an, over in an instant. So yeah. And there's, yeah. there's no lingering pain. Yeah. There is a risk of you. Uh, well, first of all, collapsing because of your, of your heart uh, problem. Um, there's a, there's a chance that if you're shocked and you're, you're, you're startled, you could, you could fall, you know, especially if you're maybe you're on a ladder or so you're on a balancing something and, and also you get shocked. Yeah. Yeah. You could definitely fall. So there is a risk of that, but then you have to look at the risk of how likely are you to have a cardiac arrest at that very moment? So when people say, why are we allowed to drive a car? Well, because cardiac arrests are rare. They, I mean, you know, I think you've had, you've had one, right? I think it's yeah, yeah. one or two. Yeah. Uh, no one. And, and how old are you? I mean, you know, how, think about that. What's the chance? And then, uh, you know, yes, you can, it, you can be in a car and you can lose control. That has happened. Um, and so you have to take a, take a look at the risk and say, well, am I going to stop driving a car? And on the off chance that I might get shocked sometime in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. or am I going to live my life? and yes. do the things that I need to do mm. and try not to worry about that and yeah. understand that if it does happen, it's more likely to happen at home. Most ca cardiac arrests happen at home, yes. about 60% of them. Most happen unwitnessed. Most people just collapse and are found later. Yeah. So you have a higher chance of being not in a car, not in a dangerous situation. And so, you know, you just, you, you have to look at the risks and the benefits and say, um, this is here to protect me. It's not here to restrict me. That's, a, that's what my doctor tells me. 
He says to me, I don't want you to ever use your device as a reason to not do something. Anything like you want to do, you can. Yeah. And that's what he's told me. So this is there mm -hmm. to protect me. So I can go out and drive my car. I can go out rock climbing and skydiving yeah. and scuba diving, all of which he has approved for me. Every person's mm -hmm. different. So talk to your doctor. Um, but it's there to protect you. So mm -hmm. that's what I try to impress upon people is, uh, yeah, you, you could, you could, you could collapse it behind the wheel. You could. It's really mm -hmm. unlikely. It's really, really unlikely that it'll happen at that moment. Um, yeah. The fear, however, is sometimes so big for people that the statistics don't matter. And that's really hard, you know, yeah, to emotionally understand that the chances are very low is hard for people. It is. I, 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 to I totally understand that. And I've, yeah. I have anxiety. <laughs> you know, I worry my brain right. goes crazy at times. Uh, I understand that. I totally understand yeah. that. 